Greetings everyone, Tog here. In today's episode, we're diving into a recent incident that has caused quite a stir, not only among aviation enthusiasts, but also in military and political circles. We're talking about the F-35 Lightning II stealth fighter jet that went missing and subsequently crashed in South Carolina. But first, let me take you back to a fascinating story from military aviation history. During World War II in 1942, an American P-38 Lightning, the great-great-grandfather of the F-35, after which the airplane is named, was lost during a training mission in Greenland. This plane was found 50 years later under 260 feet of ice. It was excavated, restored, and flew again in 2002. A beacon from the past telling its story to the future. Fast forward to today, we have an F-35 Lightning II, a fifth generation marvel, making headlines but for all the wrong reasons. After much speculation as to whether the aircraft crashed off the coast into the ocean, Debris from this aircraft were finally located just north of where the pilots successfully ejected and parachuted to safety. Now this isn't your run-of-the-mill Cessna we're talking about. This is the F-35, a plane Lockheed refers to as the most lethal and survivable aircraft in the world. Furthermore, this is the B version of the jet, which is capable of short takeoffs and even vertical landings, and happens to be the most expensive variant of the three Lightnings. Representative Nancy Mace of South Carolina voiced the sentiment many are feeling, quote, how in the hell do you lose an F-35?" End quote. She asked this on X, the platform we all used to know as Twitter. It's a legitimate question. You'd expect a multi-million dollar aircraft to have foolproof tracking systems. I mean, we all know it's a stealth fighter, but is the stealth that good? For the Marines, this is no small incident. It's officially categorized as a Class A mishap, a label given when damages reach $2.5 million or more, or when there's a loss of life or permanent disability. The Marine Corps even issued a two-day aviation safety stand-down on September 18th to find the jet and assess the situation. So where was the debris field? According to Joint Base Charleston, it was found in Williamsburg County, South Carolina. If you're in the area, best to steer clear as recovery operations are underway. As for the why, why did the pilot eject? The aircraft was reportedly on autopilot at the time. The exact details are still under investigation, but let's not forget that in aviation, particularly military aviation, things can go south real fast. Just one small issue can set off a chain of events. Typically, accidents have three or more factors that lead to the incident. It is assumed that both the NTSB and the military will investigate the accident. And now that the debris field has been found, the ever-famous flight data recorder, or black box, will likely give us many clues. However, it's probably a fair bet to say that the exact details will remain classified for quite some time. The F-35, after all, is on the cutting edge of aviation technology and is arguably the most advanced fighter in the world today. So what's next? During the stand-down, aviation commanders are reviewing all sorts of protocols, from flight practices to procedural guidelines, to ensure that the Marine Corps remains combat-ready. However, this incident does pose a lot of questions, not just about this specific F-35, but about the entire fleet and future of military aviation. And it's not just a concern for the U.S. The F-35, after all, is an international asset flown by many of America's allies. That's all for today, folks. If you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure you hit that subscribe button and share this video. Your support allows me to help creating content like this. Until next time, this is Tog signing off. And for you veterans out there, especially those who have firsthand experience with aircraft, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned and stay informed. Now you know.